Hi, I'm Greg Keller. I'm JumpCloud's Chief Product Officer, and we'd like to welcome you back to our whiteboard series. Today, we're going to talk about one of JumpCloud's most key services, LDAP, or as we call it, LDAP as a Service. We'll spend the next few minutes discussing exactly how our LDAP uh, virtualized in the cloud works for you and the services that need to connect to it. So here it goes. Let's start first with JumpCloud's infrastructure. We're going to assume that this box here is the JumpCloud platform. This is the core cloud-based directory service where your user metadata, the information about groups, etc., is all uh, managed and stored. So we'll call this guy Jump Cloud Platform. Out, sort of disassociated with the platform but interconnected is our LDAP services. And the reason for the disassociation, or I should say the reason why it is not centralized is because it is actually broadcast through an edge network around the globe. We have physical uh, or virtualized LDAP infrastructure in all the major regions on Earth. So let's draw that over here. And we'll call this our LDAP services. So let's do a couple of things now to explain the architecture and the synchronization of data between the core platform and its instantaneous replication on the LDAP services and edges. Let's start with the directory first. Let's assume, number one, that you have a user account. Number two, so we'll call this guy uh, Greg. Number two, you have a group of users. So we'll call this, just for the sake of argument, we'll call this the sales group. But notice here, we have these objects created, they are active, the group and the user, but nothing yet exists in LDAP or in our LDAP services. Why is that? There is a rule of engagement with our product that we refer to as implicit deny, meaning services do not or cannot get authorized unless the user account and or group are associated, associated with that service. LDAP is one service, our SSO layer is another service, RADIUS is yet another service. So we implicitly deny those service endpoints from being uh, authenticated unless the user and or group are associated with that service. So as an example, inside of your admin dashboard, you will elect a specific group, like sales group, to become enabled in the LDAP server or servers. Again, it's replicated around the globe. So by electing your sales group, you have then created the mirrored sales group on the LDAP side, specifically and technically as a group of names. This is important just in LDAP parlance of exactly what that structure becomes. But what about the user? The user too, whether um, you can either do this en masse by electing the sales group and all of its members to come into the group. If this user, Greg, is part of the sales group, he too will become part of that group of name sales group. And in his case, his record will be reflected in that group as a member of overlay. So when you're doing LDAP searches and you're sort of hitting upon um, you know, uh, Jump Cloud, this is exactly what you're gonna find. The group of names called sales group and its membership, of course, or in the inverse, which is traversing to the actual user, Greg, in his account, and you will see member of you know the uh, group called sales group sales group. Okay, so now that we have this replicated, again, we had implicit deny, but we've elected both Greg, his membership, and the sales group to be re reflected in the LDAP instances. How does it go down in terms of a resource that is interconnected? Let's talk about that, all right? Because right now we have this perfect unification between 
jump cloud services, bound information, you know, bouncing back and forth, really being pushed from the core platform out to LDAP. But now let's go external to your resources. So let's assume this line demarcates the, the, the open internet. On this side is your infra, all right? It could be on premise, it could be in your you know, cloud hosted AWS or GCP instance, but you, let's, let's just paint the scenario, you have a server. And on that server, uh, you have an application resource. Pick one, let's say one of the Atlassian products like Jira or Confluence, a classic application that sits on a server typically that you manage, a Windows Server or Linux Server, um, one of the two. So in this case, um, we'll just call this guy Jira for the sake of argument. It's a classic one. So the first thing that the, um, the specific administrator, the person who's sort of configuring this application with Jump Cloud needs to do is configure the, the bind DN access. This is critical. Let's, before we go over here, let's go back over here. Inside of Jump Cloud, there will be a special administrator Really, it's a service account, often humanless, and it should be. It should be a dedicated service account that will act as the bind DN. This again is elected and will be propagated over into Jump Cloud. Again, for the LDAP people in the audience, the bind DN is the critical, uh, you know, sort of the pseudoer of the LDAP, LDAP world, and it has the power and privilege to go and scan the LDAP tree and groups um, so it can then retrieve information in LDAP searches and send it back to your application. So we'll call this guy, you know, bind user, all right? So now back over to Jira, you're configuring. You are effectively number one indicating, well, where is the LDAP? It's not on my domain, so it has to go to the public Jump Cloud LDAP domain, which is LDAP.jumpcloud.com. And you'll see in a moment, yes, it's a public endpoint, but your information is highly secured and tenantized with unique access, and that bind DN is a critical part of that. Incidentally, on the LDAP endpoint side, you have your choices of either port 636, obviously recommended, for SSL or 389, which obviously you should be using with start uh, uh, TLS, TLS, so that, that there is a very secure connection between these two. So we'll make an assumption that um, you are aware of these security standards and which one to choose at which moment. So with the LDAP um, sort of configured, the next part is the bind DN you will indicate who your bind DN is, and in this case it's uh, you know, bind user. You can name it whatever you want in your infrastructure using Jump Cloud. And then finally, the search base. This is a, a long sort of DN, um, which it, uh, the DN, the distinguished name, is really the, the bucket where both our user or your user accounts and the group and membership accounts are sort of stuffed into in the LDAP server. So in our case, it's, or in your case too, when you configure it, it'd be something like OU equals users, um, your org ID, um, DC equals jump cloud, DC equals com. It's just sort of this long string. Again, many of you are LDAP people, you've done this before, um, and uh, you'll effectively configure those things. In addition to that, because our LDAP Incidentally, which is based on our Open LDAP RFC 2307. This is the, the standard vanilla Open LDAP schema that we're using. Um, uh, we effectively enable you to use Open LDAP search. You know, quite literally in your command line or you know, sort of command window or terminal, you can write LDAP search queries to your heart's content to bang against what is your LDAP endpoint to extract information or using your favorite tools like you know, the, um, the various sort of client tools that hit LDAP. Um, so in, in any event, you've got this thing configured. Basically, what is going on here then, are, you know, your application, if it is utilizing LDAP as the backing directory, is just doing LDAP searches. 
it's it's querying the LDAP endpoint you know, with your secure BindDN credentials. It is finding the specific pieces of information like an authorized user account and then pulling that information back, right? So classic transaction, but let's talk about some other fundamentals um, in terms of how the editability of the LDAP data um, is written to. A lot of people ask, well, you've got this sort of great LDAP in JumpCloud uh, interaction, why can't I write into your LDAP interface? And it's just not available at this time. The, the reality is this, uh, JumpCloud's core directory and its set of services admits to its endpoints. It is critical for us to uh, you know, carefully maintain the transaction of an update, like a user changing their password or updating their name so that all the information is driven through our directory out to the endpoint and then subsequently when your resource syncs with it it'll pull that information in metadata changes like names and of course password hashes another you know obvious thing is that there is no clear text transaction going on here um, with respect to certainly any of this transaction we're dealing in in deep hashes that are going on so jump cloud needs to really manage that secure chain of events all the way through so with that said i hope that this gives you a little bit better understanding of our ldap as a service and we'd love to have you come back and watch more of our whiteboard videos thanks again